Teenagers sometimes wonder. They always tell us we shouldn't become sexually involved, but they never tell us the limits. What are the limits? The problem with this question is that some people think if they can identify certain limits, that they can still get as close to those limits as possible and still be okay. But like floating down a river without knowing about a waterfall ahead, trying to get close to the limits is not a very smart idea. Consider this analogy. The story is told of a military pilot who flew his airplane near a forested area. Now the military had a rule that said pilots should not fly their planes close to the trees. It's pretty obvious why. One wrong move and you would crash your airplane. So instead of trying to see how close to the trees he could get, this pilot set a rule for himself that he would stay at least 500 feet above the trees. In this way, he kept himself much safer. Just as a pilot can crash into the trees, we know that emotional damage and other problems come from sharing physical intimacies outside of marriage. So instead of trying to ask what are the limits, we should follow standards that will keep us safe. For the strength of youth provides this valuable standard. Before marriage, do not do anything to arouse the powerful emotions that must be expressed only in marriage. In addition, for the strength of youth, list some specific things we should not do. It says, do not participate in passionate kissing, lie on top of another person, touch the private sacred parts of another person's body with or without clothing, or allow anyone to do that to you. Now, if those things are like flying in the trees, then what might be like flying 500 feet above the trees? Here's one idea that could be helpful. Only do things you would feel comfortable doing in the presence of your parents. For example, a 15-year-old could ask, is it okay for me to hold hands? But maybe the question should be, would I hold hands in front of my parents? You can set standards that will help you stay pure. Elder Richard G. Scott said, quote, firmly establish personal standards. Choose a time of deep spiritual reflection when there is no pressure on you and you can confirm your decisions by impressions that will come to you from the Holy Ghost. Decide then what you will do and what you will not do to express feelings. The Spirit will guide you. Then, do not vary from those decisions, no matter how right it may seem when the temptation comes." End quote. Consider talking with your parents or leaders about your standards and seek their additional guidance. Pray and ask Heavenly Father about the standards you have set for yourself. When you feel the Holy Ghost confirming your standards, you will have greater power to live them. Now let's review what we've discussed. Prophets have clearly taught us how we can stay sexually pure. They have given us this standard. Before marriage, do not do anything to arouse the powerful emotions that must be expressed only in marriage. Just as a wise pilot keeps himself far above the trees, we should not even get close to sin. You can pray and talk with God about personal standards that you set for yourself. Take the time you need to really be guided by the Spirit. Once you set clear standards, never deviate from them. And don't let what's happened in the past control your future. If you stray from the path, you can return. In a world that's full of temptation, it can be challenging to stay virtuous, but it's worth it. When you obey God's commandment to be sexually pure, you prepare yourself to make and keep sacred covenants in the temple. You prepare yourself to build a strong marriage and to bring children into the world as part of a loving family. When we look at the big picture, it's easy to realize that it's worth it to keep God's commandment to be sexually pure.